operating system for the GX devices, so the, from the color control <coughs> until the Ecrano, that's the newer devices, uh, was released. Um, so the GX device offers full system monitoring online for your Victron installation, um, as well as certain control functionality. So if you want to integrate a grid time inverter, you're going to require a GX device. And, Yeah, for ESS systems, you're going to require a GX device, and if you, yeah, for online monitoring, a GX device and the remote control. So, the GX device connects to the Victron VRM portal, and that gives you the capability to view your historic usage, as well as log into your system remotely, apply changes remotely, and do updates remotely. So you can just about do anything that you can do on site, except for wiring, while the VR and walk. Um, so on this we've got the Color Control GX. So they reaching end of life, but people are still purchasing the units, and if they've been purchased, then they will still be produced. So as soon as the orders start drying up, Victor will uh, stop producing the Color Control GX. And they've been Produced now for I think 10 or 11 years, so they're quite old. Then they've got the Venus GX, so that production has ended. Uh, the only stock available is whatever is in the warehouses. Uh, Octo GX, so also only stock that's available is the um, whatever is available in the warehouse. The Octo GX, made, what made it nice is that it had eight. VE direct ports, but that was before Victron brought out the VE CAN in VTTs, so they made that product obsolete uh, due to the ease of wiring with VE CAN. They need as many VE direct ports. And they've also got the CAN View GX, so that's for the marine market, so that won't be available in SA. And the Maxi GX, that's this big box, they discontinued. Um, they were also made for bigger systems with 25 MP, up to 25 MPPTs, so that had 25 V direct inputs. So I don't think there's any typical available in any warehouse anymore with those. Um, then we've got the Servo GX, uh, that's the, one of the newer units. Uh, that one has got three V direct ports, the option for a touch display that's a 5 inch or a 7 inch display, the GX Touch 50 or the GX Touch 70. And then the newer units, which I don't have on the slide, which is the Ecrano GX, we'll have a look at that later on on the website. So the Ecrano GX is a all-in-one unit with a touch screen built in. Uh, it's got the 3B direct ports, two USB ports, a V can, BMS can and V direct. Um, so the, the Servo GX and the Ecrano GX has also got uh, direct ports on the, or direct optional ports on the units for tank level sensors, as well as temperature sensors, or any digital inputs or outputs that you want to monitor. Um, and that's available on the Venus GX and on the Servo GX and the Ecrano GX. And then we've also got products with the built-in GX device. So that's the Easy Solar 2 GX, for instance, or the MultiPlus 2 GX, the 3 and 5 KVA you get with the built-in GX device. So it's got a display on it, a LC, uh, small LCD display, and a very limited GX device built-in. So you've got a VE CAN port, and a V-Direct port, and a USB port and Wi-Fi built in. So that's on the MultiPlus 2, 5 and 3 KVA GX or the Easy Solar 3 and 5 KVA GX. <coughs> so here's some of the features are the system display. If you've got one of the display, then you've got the display on site. Or otherwise you can connect it onto the network and V 
view the system on a big screen or from the cell phone. Um, internet connectivity, so that's via LAN or Wi-Fi. So all of the GX devices mm -hmm. has got LAN and uh, Wi-Fi, except for the color control GX, you need the Wi-Fi dongle. So that's the, all the units. Um, data logging via SD card or USB stick. So if you don't have internet connectivity, you can still log all your data to an SD card or a USB stick. A remote console, that's the ability to remote in from, or remotely log in onto the system and view our GX device from anywhere in the world. A GPS positioning, you've got the GPS dongle, that's also a Micron product. A remote V configure, so we can change the settings on our inverters remotely. A remote V firmware updates, so the V bus has been updated, so you can update the inverters firmware also. And we can also do it on an off-grid system, update the firmware remotely. It sends the complete file to the GX device, and then from the GX device uploads it to the inverter. So as long as the GX device stays on, when the inverter is powered off, then you can do the remote firmware update. So you don't need a, a hardware at the MK3? No, you don't need the MK3. No. So the, the, the GX devices has an MK3 built-in interface. Okay. So you know, you're going to require certain firmware on your GX device, and you're going to have to be above 496 on the inverter firmware to have the remote firmware update. Then. Now, that's a silly question. Sorry. From your inverter to your GX servo, does it go into the can or to the bus? It goes to the bus, right? To the VE bus, yes. Okay. Yeah. So, the, yeah, we'll get to the communication protocols now. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, we can view our system battery state of charge, voltages. Anything that's connected onto your GX device and that you can view on it, you can see all the parameters on the VRM port and all the historical data. So here's <coughs> examples of system displays. So this is if you've got the display or on the remote console, we can have our basic overview with a DC power connected. And so that's going to indicate our the red block is our grid, then we've got our inverter, then our AC loads in the green block, so that's our essential loads connected on the output of the system, and at the bottom we've got our battery, and then any non-compatible DC charging source, so if that's a micro care MPPT, or if it's 48 volt, uh, 48 volt um, aircon, then you, it will show the power on the DC power block there, separate. And then we've got our MPPT charger power. Then on the top right, we've got all that, but we've only got a Fronius PV inverter extra over there on the output. <laughs> so it indicates the inverter as well as the brand, if it's a compatible PV inverter. And at the bottom left, we've got our standard system just with a, that's a PV inverter. A PV inverter that's running through an energy meter, so SMA or whichever other PV inverter you've got that runs on, or that's connected on the system. So note in that setup, any excess PV is going to be pushed into the grid if you don't have any other limitation device. If you've got a Fronius or ABB inverter and you connect it to the grid, the Victron system limits the Fronius or ABB inverter. And then at the bottom right, we've got our system running with a grid meter, and it's got a Fronius on the input, a Fronius on the output, and a Victron PV charger also on the system. So there we're monitoring our grid and our non-essential loads, that's the red and green block. Then our, this blue block is our critical loads. And then the first PV inverter is the one connected on our input, and then the second one on the output. 
So in this setup, we can control both the PV inverters to achieve zero feeding as well. Or we can feed in all the excess power if we want. So here's the communication ports and protocols. So the first protocol is the Victron internal protocol, so that's VE bus, so that's Victron energy bus, so that's on the inverters, only the Quattro and multi plus inverters have got the VE bus communication. So that's on the any inverter with a built-in charger. They all going to be communicating on VE bus. So they connect to your GX device via VE bus. That's a normal daisy chain protocol. <coughs> parallel bus, so on the inverter you've got two VE bus ports, you can plug into any one of those and go to the next inverter, to the next inverter and have an open port on the last inverter as well as an open port on the first inverter and either one of those ports is where your GX device is going to be connected to. So there's no termination of the VE bus protocol. Then the next one we've got is the VE Direct. So that's the small MPPTs, ranging to the bigger ones, the BMV battery monitors, and some of the DC to DC chargers, um, the smaller Phoenix inverters. So that's just the standard battery inverter. They also communicate with VE Direct. So that's also a Victron proprietary protocol. Um, well, not actually, it's open source protocol, so that's a lot of people use that on their Raspberry Pis with the uh, ICC software uh, to monitor with a battery monitor or have a Victron MPPT on there. Um, and then we've also got the B-Direct to Bluetooth dongle, so if you've got a B-Direct device that doesn't have Bluetooth built in, then you can plug the B-Direct to Bluetooth dongle in and set it up by uh, your cell phone. Sorry, on the VE bus, if um, you're paralleling, does it matter which whether master or slave is connected to the server or is it just daisy chaining and anything can be connected to the server? Yeah, so it's just daisy chaining, so you must make sure all your inverters are in one stream, so not interrupted in the middle by the GX device, so then the first or last inverter can then go to your GX device, it doesn't matter which one. Then we've got the VCAN, so that's all our CAN MPPs, uh, some of the AC chargers, and the uh, new multi RS also communicates on VCAN. Um, so that's a industry standard protocol, uh, or international standard protocol CAN, so that requires termination on the end or and start of the bus. So if you have multiple MPPTs connected, you're going to also daisy chain the MPPTs on any port, it doesn't matter which port on the VECAN, and then the last unit must have a termination plug as well as the GX device or if it's the first unit with the open port must also have a termination plug. Okay, so if I have a 450 200 for example and a 250 100, can I daisy chain it? Yes. Okay. Yes. So yeah, if you've got a multi RS and two MPPTs, then you can also daisy chain them and connect them onto one bus. So a maximum of 25 units on the VCAN bus. That's the only limitation we've got. But any, we've got a charger and an MPPT connected, and a bigger MPPT, smaller MPPT, and it's all gonna work perfect on one wire. Just make sure that you've got your termination wires or termination plugs connected on the right basis. And then the last one is the BMS scan. So that's only available on the GX, so that's the Servo GX and the Equano GX. So it's got a dedicated BMS scan port. So that's already set to the board rate for most of the compatible batteries, 500 kilobits. And you can plug in any of the can bus communicating batteries onto the BMS scan port 
and it will communicate if it's a compatible battery. Can you plug, if you have the GSS, which is the one out, yes. um, can you, and you have a CAN port on your battery, can you use the VE CAN instead? Yes, so you get the Servo GXS, which doesn't have a VMS CAN port, it's a little bit more cost effective. So if you don't have a bunch of MPPTs that you have to connect on VE CAN, and you can connect them directly to VE Direct, then you can use your VE CAN port to monitor your VMS battery. So you can just change the board rate on the VE CAN port, and then it will monitor your VMS battery as well. So that's on the Venus GX or the Color Control GX, <coughs> and all the other units, you can use the VE CAN port to still monitor your battery. So like Hubble Technical insists that you must connect your Hubble battery onto the VE CAN port. Mm -hmm. There's no reason and no difference mm -hmm. between the VMS CAN or VE CAN. No. So the, the only difference is out of the box, the VMS CAN can only be set to 500 kilobits or off, and then the VE CAN can be set to 250 kilobits, 500 kilobits or off. So the Victron products operate on 250 kilobits. So the only battery I know is if you contact Freedom One and request to change the board rate on the battery, they can also change it to 250 and connect Victron units with the Freedom One battery on the VCAN port. So yeah, the VCAN port and VMS CAN port is basically the same. The VMS CAN port just can't be changed to 250 kilobits. So here we've got the V-Bus connections. <coughs> so we can only have one V-Bus system per GX device. So if you've got multiple, multi plus two GX devices that you bought accidentally, you're going to have to disable the GX units on the rest of the units or get the normal multi plus two unit. The reason for that is that you can't have multiple control modules on one system. So you're only going to require one GX device for your entire system. You can also add the digital multi-control onto the system. So that's not a control panel, that's just an interface panel. So the digital multi-control gives you the option to change the input current and have a look at the LEDs and switch the inverters on and off. But that's not as popular for the ESA systems or automotive. So there we can see that it communicates on a standard RJ45 UTP cable, straight network cable. The Victron does supply cables in different lengths, I think from 0 0.3 until 20 meters, and pre-made up, gold-plated pins, and sealed connections, so you can't get corrosion and all that. So that's why it's always recommended to use a pre-made up cable and not one that you made up yourself because of the protection against corrosion and all that that the, these products offer. So we can see that it's the standard network cable and they just daisy chain. Make sure our inverters are in one string and then our monitoring device goes in on the first or last unit and then an optional if we want the digital multi-control we can plug it in on the last inverter or on the servo GA or color control GX. Or a standard system without the GX device, you will just basic change your inverters. Uh, if you made up your own network cable, would it matter whether you use the V or A cable on the aluminium makeup net is the wiring standard? white, orange, orange, whatever, white, brown, brown, and then some, but there's the A and B standards. Yeah, I'm not sure, but it won't match as long as it's a straight connected through cable. Um, yeah, the, the and those are orange, white. Yeah. Straight. Yeah, we've got orange, white. Starts with orange, white. Yeah. So, um, yeah, just make sure that it's not a crossover cable. So it must be a straight cable. 
um, PE direct connections. So that's with the other small white connector. Um, then, so that's a point to point protocol. The maximum distance is 10 meters. And so you only get the cables up to a maximum of 10 meters in length. So, um, if you've got a GX device with limited amount of V direct ports, you can add more with the V direct to USB cable. But do note if you need multiple units more than what you've got on USB capability, you can get a USB hub, but it must be a powered USB hub because the GX can only deliver a limited amount of power to the USB devices. So that does damage the port. <coughs> you don't have a powered USB hub if you require more VE direct devices. That's the only place where that's going to be applicable. So the Servo and the Chrono GX has got three VE direct ports. The Color Control has got two, but it can handle a maximum of five devices with the U USB interface as well. And the Octo can handle a maximum of 10, <coughs> and the Maxi, which is discontinued, they could handle 25. Here we've got the VE CAN connections. So over here, we can see we've got our standard, also RJ45 straight cable. It's also supplied by Victron. That runs daisy chaining all our units, and then from the first or last unit, it connects to our GX device, and then we make sure that the first open point and the last open point has got the terminator in. So that's the VE CAN RJ45 terminator. So that's also you can, if you run out of those or lose yours, you can buy them extra, also from the product. And then a mix of products is allowed. So you can have multi RS, a charger, a shunt different sizes of chargers, all that connected onto one bus. Then we've got the Servo GX, GX Touch 50, so that's one of the older units. The newer one is going to be the Ecrano GX. It's slightly more expensive, but it's got the built-in screen, which works out cheaper than having to buy the GX and the screen uh, separately. Um, that unit is also IP56 rated if you want to mount it in the, for marine application, automotive application, the front face is IP56 rated, so it's a little bit splash proof. Um, the GX, the uh, touch screen is waterproof, uh, so the touch screen you can also mount somewhere where it's a little bit more accessible to the environment. So all our GX devices come with the standard accessories, except for the rail clips, they're not supplied anymore on the G servo. But you get all the plugs you require, you get a set of termination plugs and a power cable. So on the Venus GX, the Servo GX and the Kana GX, it's got built-in Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So the Bluetooth can be used to set up the network connection initially, as well as connect other sensors for temperature monitoring or any blue. There's a certain limited um, range of products that are compatible <coughs> with Bluetooth for Victron. So I know the temperature sensors. The Ruby. Yeah, the Ruby's work great, but yeah, for, so but. And if you want to communicate with any Bluetooth devices, the built-in Bluetooth on the units aren't as reliable. So it is recommended to get a USB dongle that you can up a Bluetooth to USB dongle. It, um, you can just plug in on your GX device and then that will operate for the rest of its lifetime. And via the Bluetooth, if you connect to the Servo GX, you can also log in to the Victro Connect and access the remote console. So here we can see 
what is the optional connections that we can do on our GX device. So at the bottom we can see we've got on the servo GX, we've got four tank inputs. So that's just normal resistive tank sensors. And then four temperature sensors. So those are the temperature sensors you get with your inverter. Each and every inverter comes with one. So you can just plug that temperature sensor into your servo GX and measure any specific temperature you want to monitor, so room temperature or inverted temperature, whichever. And then we've got our four digital inputs. So that can be preset to alarm as a door alarm, or you can run a bulge pump, switch it on and off, or have a bulge alarm, a burglar alarm, smoke alarm, fire alarm, CO2 alarm, or detect when the generator is running. So that's just three set configurations that you can set the digital input and then if it receives a 5 volt signal or whatever, it will just say burglar alarm or generator is running or whatever. And then we've got our USB ports on top, so on the Servo GX. One of the USB ports doesn't offer communication, it only gives power and that is meant to supply the optional display. So that's located right next to the HDMI port. So that first USB is only a power source, power delivery USB port. Mm. Here we've got the products with the built-in GX device. Here we can see the connections we've got. So we've got the VCAN a USB, <coughs> Ethernet, 1B direct, and then that's the VE bus port. So that's on the MultiPlus 2 and the Easy Solar 2 GX devices. So here we can have a look at our GX product overview. It's just indicating how many ports we've got per product. So on the Octo, it had 10 B direct ports. Can view, that's the marine screen that's not available in SA. And the servo has got uh, three, but it can handle a maximum of 12 with a USB <coughs> power hub. And then the multi plus two, so you've got one B direct port and all the rest. Um, temperature sensor inputs. So here's some of our GX <coughs> accessories. So we've got mounting enclosures for all our GX devices. So the Crano one will probably be released by next year. Um, but we've got for the, um, the GX Touch a nice enclosure and it also gets supplied with a mounting bracket. So, but if you want a nice enclosure you can also buy that optionally. And um, Wi-Fi dongles, that's for if you, your Wi-Fi is out of range, and you don't want to draw in a network wire, there is optional <coughs> Wi-Fi extenders available that you can use. And it's also a requirement if you've got a color control GX to have a Wi-Fi dongle if you want to connect on Wi-Fi. But it does have LAN. Next we've got our GX scan tank senders, so that runs on the V can. Um, protocol and then you've got the option to connect I think it's got four optional tank sensors inputs but that's got a current input as well as a resistive input um, available for the tank sensors. I'm not too familiar with the working of those units. Yeah I know on the automotive loads do you use that. Then you've got a GSM GPS module uh, it's also more used on automotive, so that gives you the option to connect via a GSM inter internet connection to the VRM portal, but it doesn't work in South Africa, unfortunately, so you can only use the GPS module, in fact, on that device. So Victoron is bringing out a new GSM module which will work on the South African networks. Uh, can view extender kits, so that's related to the 
display for the ring use. The GX Touch got general mounts and temperature sensors. So how to connect the GX device to the internet? So this example has got a color control GX over here. So it's got an Ethernet port. All of the GX devices has an Ethernet LAN connection port. So you can connect it directly to your router via LAN. Or if you've got a dongle for your color control GX, you can connect that via yeah. Wi-Fi. Or if you've got a Venus GX or a newer device, then you can just connect it onto the built-in Wi-Fi or via LAN. We've also got the option for GSM, but that's not available here by us. The best is to use a small GSM router and then connect that via Wi-Fi. If you require cell service as an internet connection. <coughs> or you can just have it connect to your cell phone hotspot once a month and upload the data for you onto the VRM portal. <coughs> 